Hi, this is Tim. In this video, we're gonna continue building out our linear motion trainer program. In previous videos, we have wired our push buttons, selector switches, and lights to our Allen Bradley Compact Logix PLC. And we have integrated our Compact Logix PLC with the Yamaha TS-SH servo drive using Yamaha's add-on instruction for Studio 5000. And then in our last video, we configured a handoff auto with switch four. So right now we're in auto, we're gonna switch it over to hand. And then switch three, we can jog our linear actuator. And then we can switch switch four back over to the auto position and it's going to move to the auto. Next, we have an analog sensor here to verify our position. Now, this is actually completely unnecessary. It was more just as a training tool, just to give us something to interface with. In fact, this sensor is not nearly as accurate as this linear actuator. So we're going to have to add a little bit of fudge factor for that. But we need to go ahead and scale this now. Let's have a look in our Studio 5000 program. And everything we've done has been in the main routine. Here's the add-on instruction. And over on the left pane, you can see there's our linear actuator. This is actually the only interface we have with this Yamaha TH-SH servo drive it is over Ethernet. And now let's go find that analog input just so we can see it. So remember, we had an expansion IO module here. And if we look down through here, you see we have no actual input right here. We only have local one, which is our base discrete inputs and base discrete outputs. Now what we want to do is we want to add our analog input module. So when we created this program, we did specify that there was one module, but we didn't actually specify what it was. So let's go offline. And then we're going to right click our expansion and new module. Then if we look at our module to the right of our L16 controller, about midways down, it says 1734 IE2C. And as I always say, the filter is such a good helper on this. I'm just going to type IE2C. I'm not even going to worry about the 1734. That's going to get us to two options. We're going to have our two-channel analog current input, and you also have a heart module. We have just the standard two-channel analog current input module from Rockwell Automation. So I'm going to double-click on it, and I'll call this our distance sensing module. Click OK, and that's it. We're gonna close this dialog and let's go ahead and download this program. And if you need any help downloading your program or configuring your drivers or any of that, or if you're just like, whoa, I think I'm coming into the middle of this series. Well, yeah, you are. We, are, we have uh, done two or three videos and you definitely wanna start this series at the beginning. Okay, we're back in run mode. And since we created this expansion module, so you see it has a two by it. And this is telling you the address. And one thing I wish Rockwell would do is somewhere up here around point IO or somewhere in there, I wish they would just put bracket here and put local. That way you know that this is where you would be looking for local. But local one is our embedded discrete IO, and that's what we've been using so far. And so two is our first expansion module. So if we go to our controller tags, then now, in addition to our local one, we have local two. And we're going to be looking for an input. And there you go. We have some value here. And let's go and jog our linear actuator a little bit just so we can see this value change. Now, we haven't fully integrated all of our bits in our last video. And so every time you download, and mainly when we make a transition from program mode to run mode, if you have an output energized, it's going to go right a zero. And the main one I think that is going to cause an issue with, actually two of them, and we're going to need to look at those a little in a few later videos, is first we have a safety interlock, and we haven't integrated it yet, so I am going to toggle it, which you can right-click, toggle bit, or hit Control t and then also this Move OK, right-click, and we'll toggle it. And so, yeah, I think the rest of them, actually, yeah, we have. Yeah, we have taken care of all the bits and stuff. Move OK origin which is our honing and then the safety interlock so we still need to take care of those but now i should be able to switch over to auto mode 
and jog this and okay it does work so let's go look at that analog value while i move this so now we're at 67.99 okay no doubt the analog value is changing as i move it along now this actually looks like gibberish so first let's make sure we understand what these numbers are if we double click on that expansion module that we just added the 1734 ie2c and we go to its configuration then right here we have a low engineering of 3277 that's 4 milliamp and 16383 that's going to be 20 milliamp. And we have a whole series on analog and talking about this and talking about all types of math. But in this case, we're going to do it an easier way. First, let's just make sure we see this. If I go very close to the right end, then our value should be somewhere near 3277. It should be a little bit greater than that. And it is. It's at 3297. So we're slightly over 4 milliamp. And this is something that you may have to adjust. Now, if yours, one, if it said 3277, in fact, I'm, let's, yeah, we ought to go through this, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this screw on this. That way I can back this off. And now if we look at our value, see it's right at 3285. It's pretty close to 3277. This right here means you're going to be out of range on your sensor. So we want to back that sensor up until we start seeing it to move. Okay, so we can see it moving there. So oh yeah, we're going to put it somewhere around the 34 range. And right there, I'm going to lock this sensor down. Because that's going to set our 4 milliamp value, mainly so that we're near the full span of the sensor. Now, I already should have that set from the factory, but just in case yours gets out of whack. So that means now, if we look, our zero millimeter position is 3424, we'll say. And then I'm going to run it all the way to the other end. So I am still in hand. I should be able to switch switch three to the left. All right. And that took it all the way to the other end. And if we look, now we're at 14289 which remember our 20 milliamp value was 16,383. So we're a little less than 20, but we're pretty high up there. So now we could do a lot of math to figure out this position, but I'm gonna show you an easier way. Now, this is probably not the most engineering way to do this, but what I'm gonna do is we know this is zero millimeters all the way on this side. I'm gonna take that value and that's gonna be our zero millimeter. And then we're going to throw it all the way to the direction we have now. We're going to take that value, and we know it's going to be 300 millimeters. And we can use the SCL instruction, which is available in function block or structured text, and we can calculate our value. So let's right-click our main program, add new routine. And really, I mean, it could be function block or structured text. Since it was already on function block, that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to call this my scaling. Okay. And a couple things. This first, recall from our program flow videos, the only routine that is going to be ran by default is going to be the main routine. So we're going to need a JSR to get to the scaling routine. And, you know, it's really a matter of preference for the most part. It does affect program flow, but rarely in a negative sense, as I like to put the JSRs right at the top. That way people realize that they're there, and I make them unconditional, which means I put nothing to the left of it. So we're going to put a JSR, and it's going to be the only routine available, scaling. And we're not even going to use these input and return parameters, so we're just going to right-click and remove all three instruction parameters, and that one's ready to go. And now let's open up our scale, and don't worry about finalizing that edit. We'll get it in a second. And then we are going to hit our start pending routine edits, which is that top left icon. And then we're gonna bring down an input reference, an output reference, and in between that, we're gonna go to the process tab, and bring down an SCL instruction. And so now we're gonna put connectors between those. 
And for our input, it's going to be that analog value that we found right here. So you can either use your drop down and find it, or you could highlight it right here and you could copy it and paste it. We'll go ahead and use the drop down just so you see it. So I am going to go to local colon two colon I, and then we want to find the CH0 data. That's what we're going to bring in. We'll just drag it over a little bit so we can kind of see, but you know, have some logical space in here. And then we're going to put that to our analog position. And we'll need to create that. So I'm going to right click new. And this is going to be a real tag. And remember, the main difference, you know, sometimes this will default, default to dent. In fact, if we hadn't put that connector in already, it would. A real is going to have a decimal. So in this case, we want a decimal. That way we can see the millimeter value. I'm going to click OK to it. And now we need to figure out the SCL values. And so right here at the top right, you're going to see there's a little gray box. And it says View Block Properties. We're going to click it. And we're going to want to put in our raw max, raw min, engineering max, and engineering min. And that's what this means here. EU is for engineering units. So our max engineering units is how far that way can we go? And it's 300 millimeters because this is a 300 millimeter actuator. And the furthest this way we can go is zero millimeters. So those are our engineering mins and maxes. So we're going to enter those zero for N E U min. And then we want 300 for our E U max. And now we need to know what the raw max and raw min is. And right now we are at the 300 millimeter position. And if we want to double check that, click OK. Let's go to our main routine and go down here to our AOI block. And we can see our position is 300.0 millimeters right now. So this value that we're seeing is eh, somewhere right around 14,371. That's our 300 millimeter value. So for our raw max, we're going to put 14,371, enter, and OK. Now what we want to do is we want to jog this all the way to the zero millimeter position. So it's going to switch, switch three to the right position. OK, and that's going to be zero millimeters. So let's go over to the AOI instruction in our main routine and make sure we see that. And we are, we're at 0, 0.0 millimeters. And our value is 3449. So that is going to be our minimum value. We're going to put 3449 and click OK. So now we're ready to finalize this edit. Now, you know, we've, we've talked about this in a few videos, but one, you see right now we have no green across here. And that tells, tells us that this rung definitely isn't executing. And also we have these edit bars. And, you know, I told you we will worry about it in a second. So it doesn't matter which routine you're on if you're using the finalize all button. I'm going to go back over to the scaling. I'm going to hit the finalize all button. And now we have some really nice bright green. And we can go over here just to double check that it did put in rung zero also, which obviously did. That's how we got our nice green running. But okay, so now it says we're pretty darn close to zero right here. And in fact, you can see it's bouncing between zero and 0 0.027 millimeters. So now let's switch switch three to the left, which is gonna let it go all the way over to our far left position. And we should be at 300 millimeters. And we're bouncing between, yeah, 299.97 and 300 point something. So very minor bounce. now. I already have an issue with what I did here is when I put these in and we actually got live values and notice that it's really crowded here now. So we're going to give this a little bit more space. So let's edit this function block. And I'm just going to drag that out just enough that, you know, we can get a sanity check and, you know, the numbers aren't all garbled. Just give ourselves a little space. There we go. That looks pretty nice right there. I'm going to put that in. And okay, we have an analog value now that we can work with. We're at 300, and just arbitrarily, I am just going to run this back some. 
it says we're at 121.72. Well, one, instead of bouncing back and forth between these two, let's get a view and watch. And then, yeah, let's bring in that analog position. All right, and it says 121.63, and this is 121.72. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you that this linear actuator is insanely accurate. This is not that accurate, but it gave us something to work with. So now let's make it where we can compare the two positions and see if we're in a certain range. So what we're going to do now is let's go and put in our controller tags. Let's go to edit and we're going to add Let's call it our analog position error. And we want that to be a real. And now let's go to our main routine. And right above the blue light, let's bring in a wrong. And let's go to the compute math tab. And let's bring down a subtract. And we are going to subtract this AOI, which is linear AOI, we're going to subtract the actual position. Source A will be linear AOI dot actual position. And then source B is going to be that analog position. And then our destination is going to be our analog position error. And then we're going to add a limit instruction. So we're going to go to our compare tab and bring down a limit. And our test is going to be this error that we have. And just so we have something, we're going to make our low test minus 10 and our high test 10. And now we're going to turn on the green light if we are in position. So let's go to our favorites tab, output, energize, and let's find local colon one colon O dot data dot zero. So we're going to turn the green light on as long as we're in the correct position. Put that in and yeah, right away, we did get a green light, which is a good deal. And we should be able to just move this a little bit. And it went out, okay, notice it went out for a second. And the reason for that is this analog is also a filtered analog, so it's not super fast to respond. But yeah, once it settles in, it's in the right position. So again, this was more of just so we had an external reference, but it is a pretty cool way to check analog. So right now, if I stick my hand in here, obviously the light goes out because our analog position no longer matches our servo position. Take my hand back out of the way and it works. So that gives us something to indicate that, hey, we're in the right position. I think in our next video, we're ready to do some automatic operations with this. I hope this video has been helpful. I'll put a link to our linear motion trainer down in the description, along with this whole lesson series. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber with TW Controls. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like these. When you're ready for some intense PLC training, check out our PLC lab. And if our videos have helped you out and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.